so much stronger than that. And so, and so receiving those things, like cards and, and that little gift, like really just caused me to look back and over the last few months and, and to just see all the ways that I had really been um, carried through prayer. Like I had just been so clearly carried through prayer. Um, and I was talking to my sister, my actual like blood sister about this. The other day I was talking to her about what it means to be a warrior. Um, she's the one who, who lost her husband. And um, I was just telling her where I was at with, with this whole topic of talking to you guys about being a warrior and um, how in my own life, I've, I felt very much on the receiving end of that, on the, on the giving end of that, and how I felt like I needed to recognize the times that I needed to be fought for and to accept that. And, um, and she said how important it is to remember that aspect of being a warrior. And she, um, she said, there's no one to fight for if no one needs help. And I thought that that was just so beautiful and it, and it is kind of obvious, but it's just the more I sat with it, the more it really resonated with me that there's no one to fight for if no one needs help. Um, and you could look at that from a ton of different ways, but um, in our commitment to one another as women warriors, um, there will be times that you have to be carried and what a beautiful thing that is. Um, and I'm not saying like, I guess I, I should be more empowering and telling you to be uh, warriors for each other and to stand up when you can. And I'm not saying that like you never have to try or you never have to fight. Just that um, I think everybody like deserves a break sometimes and knowing that they're fought for. Um, and I am saying though, that like, if there's a time that you are able to step up and fight for your sister, you absolutely have to do it. Um, I heard a homily a few years ago, this parish that I used to work at, um, and it has like probably stuck with me more than any other homily I've ever heard. The pastor was talking about how we so often turn to prayer when we're in need, um, in times of struggle or in times of sorrow. Um, but what is it that we're supposed to do in our joyful times? Um, and I know we've all heard this before, like, you know, this idea of not only try not to only talk to God when you need him and talk to him in the good times too, but, um, but really like what, where's our responsibility and what are we supposed to do in these times that are joyful and maybe you're not going through a hard time, but, um, and the way he phrased it was, you know, what do we do when the harvest in our lives is really abundant? Um, and he said, these are the times when we need to be sacrificing for others. And these are the times when we offer up prayers of thanksgiving for the abundance that we've been given. Um, so I don't want you to take, take away from this talk that we should like sit back and just always let ourselves be fought for or say like, oh, somebody else will do the hard part. Um, but it is just so much a give and take um, that we need to give in, in times of abundance when we can. But if we're not in a time of abundance and we're in a time of sorrow, we need to let ourselves be fought for. Um, and I was thinking about what that means practically in household. And I am just going to steal what Allie said because I thought it was so applicable, but she was talking about like how to live out our covenant to one another. And so if you're in a time of abundance or you feel um, like you're not going through a particularly hard time and you have it in you to fight for your sisters, what does that look like? And Allie said that the best way to serve one another is really trying to get to know getting to know each other and to discern how um, your sisters need to be loved. And there's a difference between how your sisters need to be loved versus how you're used to loving or how what's in your comfort zone for loving. So your comfort zone for loving somebody might be very different than what they need. And I think we have to call on grace a lot to help us discern what our sisters need. Um, and Allie said that our service to one another has to come from a place of, um, of trying to get to know each other deeply and respecting one another, and that we can really fail to live out our covenant by not doing this. Um, and so you guys have these opportunities now while you're still in household, and I, and I know it's really, it must be really hard to not be on campus. Like, I don't know, I, at first I was like, oh yeah, that sucks for people in college and whatever, and then I, and then I really thought about it. And actually my husband who like went through college with me was like, Katie, you would have been like, pissed if you didn't get to have like your senior spring at school and I realized that he was right so um but like the opportunities that you do have in household like prayer and share um these opportunities to respect your sisters uh they won't come up again that often in life and and the time that you have when you're on campus together or even um like right now not on campus but still like one community of like active stars um this is your opportunity to get to know each other 
and not just your friends, not just the ones that you're close with. This is opportunity to get to know each other so that later on in life, uh, when you need somebody to fight for you or you're willing to fight for them, you know kind of how they need how they need to be fought for and you know how they need to be loved. Um, this is your time to get to know one another. And um, I would go back and get to know some of my sisters even more if I could. Um, and as Alex said so beautifully, I wrote this down so I don't mess it up, but she said, ask what they need, listen, and take action. And I thought that was just like really, really beautiful because um, those times that I feel like I can fight for my sisters, I almost am prideful and I feel like I know what everybody needs and so I just do it. But I don't know that I take the time to listen and, and to see what they need and take action. Um, and so what I really took away in praying about this is that what it means to be a warrior is that um, basically that we should never be idle. We need to always be on guard. Whether you're in the front lines or you're um, taking a step back and you, again, like you're in a position where you need to be fought for, um, that's okay as long as we're not idle. We're still present on the battlefield wherever we are. Um, and I go back to that homily that I heard um, that when we're in a position to bless others, or in the case of Stella, the position to fight for others, we absolutely should and we have to. Um, but when we're not in a time of abundance or we're in a, a weak spot in our lives, we have to accept that with um, like complete profound humility. And in, I was trying to pray with the virtues and preparing for this to talk to you guys. And I don't know why, but like profound humility is just the one that constantly, constantly came back to me in, in thinking about being a warrior um, because it just applies in so many different ways. So in going back to what my sister said that like, I think is genius, then I'll probably like frame or something that she said that there's no one to fight for if no one needs help. Um, I think about that, like, if you're, um, somebody that isn't really struggling, maybe it's, um, maybe you're like not really struggling with sin or you're not really struggling with insecurity or anything and you are doing well, there's a temptation to, um, be really prideful and say like, you know, I'm doing really great and I don't want to get caught up in your sin. Like there can be a really like strong temptation to say, like, I don't want to get caught up in your mess and your sin and your dirtiness and your brokenness. And um, to just kind of like forge ahead, but that doesn't work because if you're not fighting, I mean, you can't forge ahead alone and leave your sisters behind because then you're not fighting for anything and it's, and it's meaningless. Um, and then I also think about it from the point of view, you know, there's, there's nothing to fight for if nobody needs help. I think from that other point of view of the times that I do need help. And, um, and if I, you know, it's okay if I need somebody to help me or to fight for me or to take turns with me, that, then that's okay because again, there's, there's no point doing it if you're not doing it for somebody else. So, um, and a, a scripture that I'd written down in my Twinkle Journal um, during Warrior Week, which I thought was funny because there's like a lot more, there's scripture that is like a lot more seemingly relevant to Warrior Week, like put on the whole armor of God or all that. But I wrote down um, in Galatians chapter six, verse two, uh, bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. Um, and in this letter, which is so fitting because he's our patron, but St. Paul is giving these instructions to um, the Galatians about how to live with each other um, as like spirit powered people in Christ. And in the verse before that, actually, he says in like Galatians 6 1, he actually says that like he tells them that like when somebody's caught in sin, others should step in and help them restore. And I think it's that, like, I forget what Galatians 6 1 is, but it's that scripture where he says, like, correct one another with, like, loving fraternal correctedness or something, where you correct each other's sins, basically. Um, and he's saying, like, you should, like, help pray to the Spirit to restore that person, to help them walk in the Spirit again. Um, but then in Galatians 6 2, when he says, bear one another's burdens and there, thereby fulfill the law of Christ, he tells them, um, and he's telling all Christians to help carry each other's burdens. Um, and this doesn't mean, um, it doesn't mean that we won't have burdens on this earth, but we will. But one of those burdens is, um, one of the biggest burdens is like our temptation to give in to sin and, um, and how heavy that can be in trying to get us out of it. But, but St. Paul tells us that he, he um, we're not meant to bear that sin and that burden alone. We're not meant to battle sin and temptation on our own. Um. And that we carry each other's burdens as well. And we sometimes go through seasons where those burdens are too much for us to haul on our own or to carry on our own. Um, and God's spirit gives us the power to deal with these issues. This is like all in Galatians. I'm not like just like 
living here, but um, God's spirit doesn't, it does give us the power to deal with these issues on our own. But another way that dad, God does give us to handle with these things is, is he provides us with the ability to help each other. Um, and I just thought of Stella so much and in, in like kind of praying with that scripture today. Um, and so one way that we can kind of fail as Christians is to not allow anyone to see the burdens that we're carrying. Um, and I think on a practical way in household, what that can look like is not sharing something at prayer and share or not being vulnerable. Um, that can be a huge temptation. And it's not a bad temptation necessarily because um, it's hard to share things that we're going through or that are personal to us because we have that fear of falling behind or we have that fear of um, sharing it or bearing it all and then like not being responded to. Um, but that's not going to happen in our household because of our covenant to one another. Um, and so like later on in Galatians, Paul says that we do need to carry the weight of our own sin and the weight of our own responsibilities to Christ, but that Christians are meant to help each other with these loads when they become overbearing. Um, and so that is really like what I reflected on the most in thinking about being a warrior is that it is, it is this like really cool, badass, intense thing to, uh, to stand up and to fight for one another. But there's also a really humbling side of it and recognizing the times that you yourself need to be carried and need to be fought for. Um, and so I go back to that fear that I dramatically wrote in my twinkle journal about not wanting to fall behind or get left behind. And um, I would, if I could like talk to freshman me now, I would say like the only way that you can possibly fall behind in this sisterhood is to not allow yourself to be fought for or to not do your part to fight for others. And if you can do those two things, you can never fall behind and you can never be alone. Um, so my challenge to you guys would be um, for this week would be to spend some time in prayer and reflection and just answer the question like, where are you right now? Are you in a time of abundance where you can bless others and you can fight for others? Um, or are you maybe more in a time that you need to be fought for and you need to be carried? Um, and maybe it's a little of both. I know we all always have a little of both, but like try to figure out like which one of those camps you kind of fall in right now. Um, get a clear picture of where you are and be really honest with yourself and like with a spirit of humility and ask our lady to, to grant you that humility. Um, Maybe you are in a blessed time of abundance and you have the strength in you to fight for your sisters. Um, and maybe you could be trying a little harder to carry one of your sisters. And so if you, if you find that you're in a position where um, you kind of are in a time of harvest and, and like, I remember like having that moment exactly when I first heard that homily where the priest told me, like not me, but the whole church, um, like if you are in like a blessed time that you need to be blessing others and sacrificing for others. I like walked out of the church and talked to him that day. And I told him, I was like, I really need to hear that because like everything's going really great for us right now. Like we, this was like a, a year or two ago. And I was like, we really feel like blessed and we have everything that we need. And like, I don't have any complaints. And, and it had never really occurred to me that in those times I shouldn't just be twiddling my thumbs or just like basking in the glory of not having problems in my life, but that I really needed to be like, offering that up and spending that free, like carefree time that I have, like sacrificing for others. And I need to hear that. So maybe if you're in a, if you're one of those people that's in a really blessed time right now, um, I want you to think about how you can bless others with that and how you can really fight for them, um, especially within households. And I want you to go beyond just like the go-to people that you talk to, because we all have our little, like whoever you're closer with in household. Um, and maybe it's somebody that you don't know that well, or maybe it's somebody they haven't talked to that much. Um, but you might still very much be called to fight for them right now. Um, and you could change their life. Um, and then if you are in a position where things are hard and you don't have it in you to fight for somebody else right now, um, then I want you to like, let somebody into that. Obviously let Christ into that and let him fight for you. Number one, above all. But then also like consider letting somebody in household into it and let them fight for you because um, that is what it is to be a warrior. It's not just to be the cool one on the front lines to stand up for everybody, but it's also to allow yourself to be fought for. So that's really all I have for you guys. Um, 